Hi, Calvin family. Just want to share a few thoughts with you from God's Word this morning. Hopefully it brings you some encouragement and also some challenge uh, in these days. Uh, You ever observe a little child trying to get their parents' attention? Uh, The parents may be distracted. Maybe they're doing something important or having a conversation with another adult and the child comes up and begins to cry. Daddy, 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 daddy. And then they begin to tug on the pant leg and uh, maybe jump up and down. The volume increases and uh, you're watching and you'd like to walk over to daddy and say, hey, dad, there's somebody who's trying to get your attention. (laughs) Well, do you ever feel that way with God? That uh, you're trying to get his attention and you're just not getting any response. And it feels like he's not listening. Maybe you felt that way. Well, you're not alone. Um, It's actually quite common in uh, the life of a believer. Uh, It's quite common uh, through uh, the scriptures as well. Um, Just reading through the Psalms numerous times, David will cry out, Lord, are you there? Are you listening? Psalm 22, this, these famous words that Jesus himself spoke from the cross are quoted from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night but I find no rest. Just this longing to be heard and longing for an answer. Well, if you're there right now, um, just want to bring you some words of encouragement and maybe some words of challenge as well. Uh, These are days when we are left uh, waiting, waiting on the Lord. I think we can learn some lessons, lessons from Scripture in times of silence. First of all, uh, we learn to love God more than the gifts that he gives to us. Uh, Psalm 42, David cries out, As the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Think of the yearning. The longing. The picture is of a deer that's been hunted, chased relentlessly, and it's parched with thirst, ready to drop from exhaustion, just looking for cold streams. And maybe that's where you are right day, right today. Uh, your soul is parched, you're physically exhausted, and you're just crying out for some help. But in these times, we realize that there's really nothing in this world that can satisfy. And it's in these times when the things, the gifts of God have been removed from us, the things that we really just take so much for granted, that we really come to a place of a keen desire for him, a longing for him. You know, it's only logical that uh, if the things that God gives us are so good and satisfying, that God himself, the source of all those things, must be the ultimate satisfaction. You know, that's our goal. Our goal in life is to know God. And sometimes in life, he remains silent so that our longing and our desire for him becomes keener. And so in times of silence, we, we learn to love God more than the gifts that he provides us. Secondly, uh, we learn to be quiet and listen. I guess that's one of the things that we've really had the opportunity to do in uh, this time of isolation. Remove from friends and family. Uh, remove from uh, the hustle and bustle of work. Uh, remove from the distractions of, of uh, life all around us. Uh, we've been granted a gift. A gift to be quiet. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, you don't live in my house with my kids. Well, there is always the opportunity to find a quiet place, a time in the day to find quietness. And, you know, it takes me back to a story in, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, where the prophet Elijah has this great experience of victory 
over the prophets of Baal and and uh, and uh, you know they have this showdown on Mount Carmel and and God wins the day uh, with the contest sending down fire from heaven through the call of his prophet Elijah and on the heels of that comes a death threat from wicked Queen Jezebel and Elijah is overwhelmed with terror he boots it into the wilderness, running and wandering in terror for 40 days until he ends up on the mountain of God, Mount Horeb, in a cave, sleeping. And one morning he gets up. And he goes to the mouth of the cave and he's, he's just crying out for God. God, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? And there is this great tornado that comes down upon the mountains and it says it picks up the rocks and it rends the rocks and and this great commotion, like a hailstorm of rocks. And the scripture says, uh, but God was not in the wind. And then what follows that is, is fire, a firestorm. Uh, maybe lightning flashes from the sky and sets up the grass, the vegetation on the side of the mountain on fire. And, and this great blaze and commotion is happening. And uh, the word says, but God was not in the fire. And then what follows that is a great earthquake and the whole mountain shakes. I can imagine Elijah just trying to find some steady foothold or reaching out for something to grasp onto. And uh, the storyteller says, uh, but God was not in the earthquake. And then the sound of a gentle whisper. The King James Version, a still small voice. In the quietness, in the stillness, when the commotion has stopped, God speaks. And he asks Elijah a question, what are you doing here? <laughs> Good question. And Elijah says, well, I'm all alone. And God says, you're not alone. I have many more faithful followers now go and here's what your assignment is. And in that quiet moment, in that stillness, when it seemed like God was not answering, God spoke to him. Maybe our problem sometimes is we don't take the time to be still and to reflect and to listen. Well, we, we learn to love God more than the things he gives and we learn to be quiet and still and listen. But also... Uh, we learn that we cannot manage God. In times of silence, we, t we learn that we cannot dictate to God. He refuses to jump when we say jump. He's the boss. He's in control. And that was kind of the lesson that Job had to learn. You know, he found himself in destitution physically, economically, relationally. Everything was taken from him. He experienced, I think, the ultimate trial and test of life on this earth. And he responded with questions, God, why? Why is this happening to me? And uh, his foolish friends compounded the whole thing with false accusations and conclusions. And after uh, 30 some odd chapters recorded of his life of Job questioning God, Job 28 verse 1 um, the Lord came to him and asked, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? In times of silence, God wants to teach us something more about him than our preconceived ideas and logical conclusions about the eternal God. In times of silence, it's, it's time for us to learn about him and who he is and the way he does things. Job didn't get all the answers to his questions, but he did learn something about the sovereign control and the awesome providence of God in human life. Finally, in times of silence, we, we learn patience and perseverance. Hey, eh? yeah, we talked about that last week. Patience and perseverance, uh, not just to endure, not just to grin and bear it, not just to grit our teeth. And, and hold on tight. But hope, hope is an expectation that things will get better. 
not necessarily in this life. But this life is, is, is just a glimpse of the vastness of eternity and the eternal glory of God. The glory that is coming far exceeds that which we can see and experience right now. That's our hope. We've got to hold on to that. In times of silence, we've got to remind ourselves that God has promised so much more than what we're experiencing right now. And our sense of longing for that becomes keener. And our trust in the Lord and his promises become stronger. The psalmist writes, David writes, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up out of the pit of destruction, out of a miry bog, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. That's hope. It doesn't necessarily resolve the problems of the day. And it doesn't necessarily remove the conflict and the suffering of life right now. But it does strengthen our resolve to continue to trust God and obey what he's told us so clearly to do right now, each day, in following Jesus and being more and more like him. We do that with the hope that someday, someday, he's coming back and we shall spend eternity with him in indescribable glory. May that keep your hearts and minds through these times of silence and waiting. Father, thank you for your grace in our lives. Thank you for reminding us that you are the eternal God and that you are sovereign over all things. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ that they would put their hope in you, that you would give them the resolve to remain faithful to you, to trust you, that you will help them through whatever they face. Help them in their relationships right now, in their parenting, grandparenting, in their family relationships with husband and wife, uh, if they're working with their work colleagues, uh, with their, with whatever you've called them to do, Father, give them the grace to continue to trust you and do in obedience what you've told them to do, waiting upon you with a great expectation that you will someday make all things right, that our lives and eternity are in your hands. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.